A fire at an intensive care unit in a hospital in India has killed at least 13 coronavirus patients. It comes as India's outbreak is getting worse, with hospitals in the capital running out of oxygen to treat seriously ill people. The Sir Ganga Ram Hospital in Delhi says 25 patients have died in 24 hours and its oxygen supplies are almost out. Today, India reported the biggest daily rise in infections of any country since the pandemic began, nearly a third of a million cases for the second day in a row. Overall cases now stand at over 16 million. The BBC's Nikhil Inamda is in Miraj in Maharashtra, India's richest state, but one of the country's worst COVID hotspots. Not just in Maharashtra, but the situation across the con uh, country continues to actually remain quite grim. Uh, yesterday, we shattered a global record of sorts with 315,000 fresh new cases. Today, that tally has jumped to 330,000 with over 2,200 plus deaths. Uh, also, uh, the news that's coming out of hospitals across uh, India is pretty devastating. One of the largest hospitals in the capital, New Delhi, actually is saying that 25 of their sickest patients had died because uh, ventilators were malfunctioning. Meanwhile, hospitals actually also continue to put out SOS calls on social media saying that they just have a few hours of, hospital, of oxygen supplies left. Some even saying that supplies have run out entirely. Uh, Patients, meanwhile, across the country scrambling for beds and ventilators. There's also a shortage uh, of essential drugs for the treatment of COVID, such as remdesivir, being reported. Now, amid all of this, uh, the Prime Minister Modi is going to be taking stock of the oxygen supply situation and also meeting with the federal ministers of states that are worst impacted by COVID-19. But for now, the situation on the ground is very worrying. And between all of this, we've also heard of yet another tragedy from a city close to Mumbai. By Vasai, where an ICU actually caught fire, leading to 13 people dying. Well, as Nikhil just mentioned there, at least 13 coronavirus patients have been killed in that fire in the hospital near Mumbai. Flames engulfed the intensive care ward of the Vijay Vallab private hospital in Virar on the outskirts of the city. Hundreds of other patients had to be evacuated from there. And on Wednesday, more than 20 COVID patients at another hospital in the same state, Maharashtra, died after the oxygen supply was interrupted. I've been speaking to Dr. Ramanan Laxminarayan, the director of the Centre for Disease Dynamics, Economics and Policy in Delhi, about what he has seen on the ground there. It's really difficult to describe. It's really the worst humanitarian crisis that I've been witness to. Uh, there are people dying for lack of oxygen in what is not, a, you know, generally a, a, a poorly endowed country. And this is happening in some of the best hospitals in the country. One can only imagine what's happening in rural India where there are no hospitals, uh, you know, at, at large scale. Uh, there are shortages of beds. Uh, drugs are in shortage. Testing is not really available. You have to get a, wait a week before you get tested. So overall, uh, the system is just on the verge of collapse and in many places has collapsed already. And yet, I mean, it was only last month that the health minister was declaring that India was in the end game of the pandemic and praising the government's handling of this. Uh, there was some sort of euphoria that India was beating the virus. Why have things unraveled so quickly? Things have unraveled quickly because this is how a virus spreads in a dense population. And this situation was avoided last year through a serious lockdown. And I think, uh, you know, uh, people forgot that uh, when you go back to normal life, so to speak, that the virus just comes back. This is the lesson from every other country. This is not specific to India. But somehow there was a narrative of Indian exceptionalism that somehow Indians were different, more immune to the virus. And, uh, and that was clearly not a helpful narrative in encouraging people to to mask up and socially distance and the virus saw an opportunity and came back very quickly. Yeah and I mean just tell us give us a sense of how it is spread the the, the worst hotspots in certain states in India uh, how badly is this on a national scale are there areas that are still largely unaffected where there are supplies of oxygen? So first of all oxygen is a highly localized commodity so it is required in the places where people are really sick also what we see as hotspots are only places where testing is adequate. There are many parts of the country which are suffering and we only have reports from there, but not the testing data simply because the testing capacity doesn't exist. The health system in those places like UP and Bihar is just weak. 
so we just don't get to observe cases there. But I think now COVID has spread widely across the country. There's probably some pockets that still remain unaffected, but it would be a mistake to think that this is a disease just of Delhi, Mumbai, and a few capitals and some tier two towns. Uh, that is simply where the health system is picking up cases. COVID is a problem, I think, in many more places than that.